So everybody seems to agree on the virtues of transparency, but I would like to argue that it's useless, actually, uh, without clear communication. I myself am involved in an organization called Agfo.org. It's an internet startup supported by the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Rabobank. And we've been working for four years. Uh, and we've set up an open source software platform for the development sector, now used by over 250 partners globally. And it helps our partners to share knowledge, uh, raise funds, and simplify uh, reporting back from the field. So basically it's about building online and mobile tools for development aid. I think in any system, at least that's my personal view, the feedback loop is the hardest thing to get organized. We've developed a concept called really simple reporting that allows people in the field closest to the things that are happening to provide input, provide context and basically use SMS for example to show what's happening. In short, we're about building transparency and trust in this space. We are a global team, but we have our head office in The Hague and it's been interesting to see uh, how the Dutch government uh, has sort of embraced transparency and uh, this is the Dutch government, nice building in The Hague and last December, uh, I think a lot of people actually missed it because of the budget cuts and everybody has been busy doing their thing but there was a motion uh, passed in Dutch parliament, I do not expect all of you to read Dutch but it's actually about open data and what it says is transparency of budgets and insights in results is limited. Open, aid, open data will lead to more efficient development aid, so there's no discussion anymore. It's been proven. 2011, we have to initiate a strategy to open up development aid data. I personally think this is a very important step. I think it's a, it's very, uh, it's a cultural change and it uh, provides a lot of opportunities. The Dutch government also supports the IT standards. It's a standard that makes it easy to share knowledge uh, or to share project data between different organizations. Some people will tell a lot more about it this week. Um, but it's basically trying to address the, the question, where did the money go? That's my short version of it. And that's a hard uh, nut to crack. If you're working in a developing country, how do you actually know how much money was supposed to arrive from different donors to your place? That's not an easy question to answer. If it, that the uh, government in the UK has taken up this challenge and I think it's, uh, it took the first step and it's a big step forward to open up the data. What are they spending where? They opened this up and they also made it easy to, to compare this data. So there's a, on the technical side you can get to that data so it becomes possible to compare it. Now that's great. It's a big step forward. But when you actually look at, at more closely of what uh, this data is, I just pulled up one uh, sheet of project information. <coughs> what I'm seeing is project budget, 100 million pounds, risk of not achieving goals, high. <laughs> <laughs> Why is my question. So if you actually dive deep, you don't get the contextual information that just explains what this is about. Somebody knows why, probably the information is in the ministry why. So the question is, is there enough information here that people can understand it? Is there enough information for people to actually start doing things with this data? I do not think so. A few uh, months ago in February, we, uh, we were opposite the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, we asked them uh, whether we could uh, help and, and start a pilot with the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs and opening up their data. And the challenge was, uh, it, it's part of the, maybe it's good to say, the Dutch government has of course its formal tracks and we're a pilot on the side to see what's possible with using our platform in this space. The challenge was to open up data for 24 water programs that are supported by the Dutch government. It's uh, close to half a billion worth, the portfolio. Be fully IAT compliant, to show where the money's going and, and comply with the technical standards. But at the same time, be easy to use and understand, so the general public and people get what it's about. I won't go into the process too deeply, but basically what we've done is we looked at the Agfo project format that we have and the IATI standards. We retooled our database to have an IATI compliant Agfo data format that can do two things. It can be export the data by the IT standard, but it can also facilitate online display of projects and programs in a way that people can understand. 
Now the content that we use comes from two sources. Pyramid, which is the core data system of the Dutch government. And we looked at, for these 24 programs, background documents. So we also looked at, in this case, BEMO's, Beoordeling Memoranda in Dutch, to see whether there's additional information that we could use. In short, we spent approximately two hours of uh, manual work to, to look at these BEMO's. Um, so it's approximately two hours for a 25 million euro program or project to be able to allow online display, which we feel is, is the minimum level of information you want to display to make sense. The results um, can be displayed uh, in different websites. You can currently have a look at them on the Overchange website. Um, so there's a map where you've displayed all these programs. You can dive into them, you can click the buttons and uh, see the data information. And every project gets its own uh, project page. In this case, um, you see the information, title, summaries, locations, so programs where they're based, pictures, data of the, of the funding, but also background information. So it gives an easy to, to understand uh, visual window into this project. One of the most important things is that it's now open for contributions. So partners that are linked to this specific program can provide contextual information, comments, changes, additional data, reports from the field. So it's open for contributions from the field. And some of the things that we manual work that we did is things like pictures, data locations. These things had to be done manually, but make it visible in such a way that it becomes easy for people to understand to provide data. Of course, it's also EIT compliance, so we can do the, the formal export of this data. So I think the challenge uh, in many of these cases is, is twofold. It's basically the question needs to be asked, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to show where the money goes? Or are you to, trying to make sense to, to the public of what this is about? And I think these are two different goals, different target audiences, but they can be approached in the same, in the same uh, fashion. So the challenge, I believe, for the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but in general for most of the organizations, I think is to have a look at your data sets. In this case, Pyramid is the core data information system of the ministry and it provides data, but it's often internal data. So if you open up this internal data, is it very useful for the public? Does it have a communication element to it? It's never been, it's never been designed to be public in a, certain, in a certain way. And of course, that's a very good step, open that data up. But if you do so, I do not expect there to be a large crowd of software developers that's going to jump on it and do cool visualization stuff with it. Because that's what people seem to think. I do not think the data is rich enough for people to be actually make the first step or the step forward. So the real challenge, I believe, is how do you export data sets that are rich enough, rich enough that people can do stuff with it and can understand it. And then I believe that a lot of organizations can take it to the next level. Now to do that, you need manual work. Somebody needs to invest time, somebody needs to invest resources to, to get the data out there. And what we've shown, I believe, is that with relatively minor, minor uh, efforts, so a few hours per program, you can actually have a reach a high value. So you can push out data sets that are really valuable where people can interact and do very cool stuff with. But, and that's where it becomes tricky, you of course need to really seriously consider your core process. What's the data that ends up in your core data system? Can you adapt processes so that you capture communication data in your core system, in this case a foreign affairs pyramid, so that once you export it, it's automatically done, in a sense. And this is the tricky one, because everybody knows that adapting core processes is not easy. It's very hard. And often software developers say to me, it's not that hard. But if you actually look at type, the way we are typing boards, for example, now are still being used. When I look here, I see QWERTY, Q-W-E-R-T-I. And that still comes from the old typing writers. I think some of you might have known. But historically, when you were typing, you had these hammers that swapped. So the letters are actually opposite of each other, so that they wouldn't get stuck. 
And even now, much years later, we're still using the same typing boards that are not actually the most efficient ones. But, so it's hard to get rid of history, basically. And I think this is the challenge we all need to face. Now, I believe that this is a joint effort. And this can only be done if, if large numbers of organizations join hands. And I think the challenge for us is to see how we, as a group, internationally can become a movement. I think these are splinters. You have a lot of initiatives that are promising, but there's no coordination. I believe there's no international coordination in this space at this moment to bring us to the next level. And I think that's needed. And I think it's a great step that the Dutch government has taken to, to organize it here in the Netherlands. But we need to think of this as a global issue, a global challenge that we jointly need to face. And once we do, I believe we can make this a better place. Thank you very much.